Hey guys, so today I'm going to be testing the Ryzen 5 7600X. I'm going to be running benchmarks and stress tests to see what kind of temps I get, see what kind of scores I get. While gaming, I'll monitor my temps and see what kind of FPS I get. It will be paired with an RTX 4080 and it's going to be super sicko mode. Before we get started, please like and subscribe if you enjoy watching this content. I'll continue to put out content weekly and I'll strive to make every video as sicko mode as possible. All right, let's get to it. So an overview of the parts that I'm using in this particular build. Obviously, I have the Ryzen 5 7600X. I'm using the Gigabyte B650 Aorus Elite motherboard. So it's not super high end, but it's a decent board. I have 32 gigabytes of Corsair Dominator RAM at 5600 megahertz. I'm using the Founders Edition 4080. I have a 500 gigabyte WD Blue NVMe drive. And cooling the processor, I'm using the NZXT Kraken X53. And it's all inside of the NZXT H5 Elite case. So on paper, the Ryzen 5 7600X is a six core, 12 thread processor. It has a clock speed at 4.7 gigahertz with a max clock speed at 5.3 gigahertz. It says its default TDP is at 105 watts. It is using the newer AM5 socket type, which also means that it's compatible with DDR5 RAM and compatible with PCIe 5.0, which makes it pretty future-proof. AMD also started to put integrated graphics on the X-Series CPUs, which can come in handy if you're needing to run the CPU without a dedicated GPU. Most people probably won't use that, but it's nice to have if you do need it. Now this processor does have a unique design. It's much different than how the Zen 3 processors look. Immediately when I saw this design, I thought to myself, that's just asking to get thermal paste stuck in the cracks. It also looks like it has less surface area for your heatsink to make contact with your processor. So I was a little skeptical of the design even before I started doing my testing. And I am using a dual fan water cooler, but I'm honestly not sure if that's enough for this processor. Now this processor came out in quarter three of 2022, which was September. So by no means is it brand spanking new. And I would say that the 7600X was meant to be a direct competitor to the 13600K. The Ryzen 5 7600X usually hovers around 250 $50, while the 13600K hovers between $320 and $300 as of right now in 2023. The 13600K has 14 cores, 20 threads, versus the 7600s, 6 cores, and 12 threads. And it may seem a little crazy saying this, but 6 cores, 12 threads isn't really impressive anymore. Now, I'm not loyal to either brand, whether it's AMD or Intel. I have had AMD builds in the past. I did have a Ryzen 5 3600X when it first came out and it actually failed on me after about three months. I did send it back to AMD and they did end up replacing it saying that it was defective, but I ended up upgrading to a Ryzen 7 3700X and I actually used that in my main build for a while. Now there was another really nice AMD build I built for a client while I was working at Geek Squad. It was using a Ryzen 7 5800X and for some reason she kept bringing it back saying that the computer was shutting off while she was playing Fortnite. So not a very intense game. So we replaced the motherboard, the power supply, the RAM. We even replaced the GPU and the CPU. And she still kept bringing it back saying that it was shutting down while she was playing her games. So after about two months, we just really didn't know what to tell her. We said it, it could be an issue at your house. Maybe you're having power issues with your outlets. She ended up replacing the motherboard with a Z590 motherboard paired with an Intel i7 11700K. We put it together for her. She took it home. She came back to tell us that it's working flawless and she never brought it back in again. I'm not saying Intel is better, especially because people get upset when you pick one or the other. I've had really good AMD builds too. It's just, that's just my experience. Could just be my luck. So the first test I ran was a Cinebench test. Single core performance, you're looking at a score of 1,921, while multi-core performance, you were looking at a score of 14,346, with a high temp of 96 degrees Celsius, which is honestly not the greatest, but after reading up what temps you should be expecting with the Ryzen 5, apparently this is normal. Uh, everything's under control, situation normal. Everything's perfectly all right now. We're fine, we're all fine here now, thank you. How are you? When you compare the score that I got with the 13600K, I got 24,022 with a high temp of 80 degrees Celsius. So a difference of about 10,000 points in the Cinderbench test is honestly crazy. Like that's 
what I would imagine an i3 versus an i7. That's that's how big of a jump I imagine. Except this is a Ryzen 5 and an i5. Now the next test I ran was a 10 minute firmware test where I put 100% load on the GPU and the CPU. My CPU temp ended up hitting 96 degrees Celsius with my GPU being a cool 60 degrees. So on the 13600K, I got 86 degrees Celsius on the processor and 61 degrees on the GPU. Now they do make thermal guards or CPU holders that are made specifically for the AM5 socket type. It says that it should help with temps and it should help thermal paste from getting stuck in all the crevices. I did order one. I will be testing it once it comes in. You could undervolt the GPU. You could mess with overclocking. The thing is I didn't want to do that. I just want to run it stock and I want to see what results I get. Now, if you move on to gaming benchmarks, first I ran the Firestrike Extreme test. I got a score of 28,352 on the Ryzen 5 versus 31,114 on the 13600K. It seems like in every category, it was beat by the 13600K, as well as the temperature. I hit, I hit 81 degrees Celsius with the Ryzen 5 and 66 degrees on the i5. Now, if you move on to Time Spy, my score was 20,625 on the Ryzen 5, 25,420 on the i5 13600K. The temp wasn't as different, 78 degrees on the Ryzen 5, 73 degrees on the i5. Once again, every category, especially if you look at the CPU test, that's where it made the biggest difference. It was a 74% increase in FPS. Now keep in mind, I was running DDR4 RAM with the 13600K and I'm running DDR5 RAM with the Ryzen 5 7600X. It doesn't seem like RAM has a crazy big effect. That's one reason why I keep saying DDR4 RAM is probably sufficient for gaming right now. It doesn't seem to really be affecting any of the tests. I ran the Shadow of the Tomb Raider benchmark test, ultra everything at 1440p. My FPS was consistently over 130 FPS throughout the duration of the test. I had an average FPS of 159 frames per second. 1440p, 144 hertz. I'll be able to utilize the full potential of my monitor and it's exactly what you want. Now, when you move to the Cyberpunk 2077 test, Cyberpunk is a very graphically intense game. I even turned it up to Psycho. And I, I'm actually very impressed with this benchmark because I averaged 95 frames per second, which is really on par with my 13600K. I didn't really see a big difference in FPS. Now I have seen that Cyberpunk is more of a GPU heavy game. So it was good to see that while gaming, the Ryzen 5 can keep up with the 13600K, which is what you want. To the naked eye, I can't really see a difference between the i5 13600K and the Ryzen 5 7600X when it comes to Cyberpunk and to the Shadow of the Tomb Raider. I haven't played GTA 5. I'll go ahead and play and I'll see what type of FPS I get. I'm gonna turn max settings up. I'm hoping to get over 60 frames per second just so at least the game plays pretty smooth. Anything above that is just great. All right, so I just started CB temps at 65, which is more of what I like to see. FPS is hovering around 75, so that is above what I wanted. I wanted it to be above 60. Obviously closer to 144, but in the past from what I've seen with the 4080 at max settings, even with my i9 12900K, I don't hit anywhere close to 144 frames per second. CPU is hitting in the 70s now. I'm only using 53 watts of power. Oh my gosh. Okay, well, even with those explosions, my FPS actually went up. I'm in the 80s now. CPU is working a little harder. I'm at 71 degrees. Let's get in this. Come on. Dude. Oh my gosh. Yeah, well, that made my FPS go to the 50s. I think overall, it's just a, it's a nice, peaceful experience. You don't have to worry about your CPU overheating while playing really any game. I didn't have any heat issues or experience thermal throttle with any of the games I played which is what you want. The Ryzen 5 is designed to be an awesome gaming processor. You'll have the peace of mind that your processor is able to handle any game you throw at it. In all three games, my FPS was above 60. So overall, the AMD Ryzen 5 7600X is an awesome gaming processor. You compare it with any modern GPU that's out right now, and it's still able to utilize its full potential without severely bottlenecking the GPU. The three games that I tested, my temps were very comfortable while gaming with all three games as well. Now with gaming benchmarks, 
I did see my CPU temps hit higher temps and my scores were nowhere close to the 13600K scores. For me personally, because I do video editing, I like to have a better all around processor. I think $50 is worth moving up to a processor that is a better all around CPU with more cores, more threads, generates less heat. I live in Texas. It gets hot as balls here in the summer. It's honestly pretty miserable. I don't even know why I live here, which makes me want a processor that generates the least amount of heat as possible because not only does it keep the temps down in the room, it will also help with longevity if you care about that. Typically, if something runs hotter for a longer period of time, it's more likely to fail. Online, it said the max temp for this processor is 95. I actually hit 96, so I beat their max temp, and that's not a good thing. I don't want to see my temps in the 90s at all. I don't care if it's by design, I want my temps lower. Now, people will say, well, why don't you overclock it? Why don't you undervolt it, this and that? I'm making this video because this is what you get when you run stock. What's interesting is that AMD has not improved the core count as well as the thread count since they started Ryzen. The Ryzen 5 1600X had six cores, 12 threads. So I find it odd that AMD is not increasing that because Intel is, and it seems like the tables have turned. Well, 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 how the turntables. And what I mean by that is in the past, AMD focused on giving you more cores and more threads. Intel focused more on their single core performance to give you a better gaming experience. AMD still gave you a great gaming experience, but they gave you a better overall experience if you're gonna be doing any kind of heavy CPU workloads. It seems like Intel is pulling ahead in that category. Now, would I recommend this processor? I'm gonna say it. I'm about to say it. Three, three, three. I don't care that you broke your elbow. I would probably go with an i5. If you want a, just a better all-around processor, I would say spend a little more. You get cooler temps, better performance. I don't want to bash AMD. They've made really good processors. I loved my Ryzen 7 3700X. I think if my temps were lower, I would like this processor more. It's just, it's heating up real good. Now you could say that, oh, well, you're, the motherboard box is on top of it. It's like, well, I ran my stress test, that box was not on there. But that's my take on the 7600X. I still like AMD. I'm not gonna stop buying their products because of this processor. I hope that AMD puts out another processor that is super competitive. Maybe not a processor that even is a better performer, but maybe a processor that doesn't heat up as much and is a better price. Hmm. This is just my take with the 7600X with the stats and the temps that I got with this configuration. What the fudge? Once again, if you like what you saw, please like and subscribe. It really helps me out. I strive to put out the best quality content that I can. I am kind of new to this, so I am learning. I'm trying to improve every time I put a video out. But like I said, I'll try to make each video that I put out even more sicko mode than the last. And like always, have a sicko mode day.